Frugal Crafter. It is officially fall and I think it's time for my mantle to have a redo. I have taken all the stuff off it except for that mirror which I am going to take off and paint and I'm going to take you through the process of how I take a bunch of random objects and kind of make them all cohesive and work together in a design. This video is sponsored by Martha Stewart Crafts Vintage Decor Paint. I'll be using that to upcycle a bunch of odds and ends from around the house. It's wonderful stuff. It covers in one coat most of the time. No prep is needed and it's just a fantastic paint to work with. So first thing we're going to need to do is start painting our objects that we want to go on our mantle. The first thing you want to do when you um, get your paint, you're get, getting your things ready, is to make sure they're clean and free of dust. So I'm just using a damp rag to wipe down these objects that I want to paint. And then you want to give your paint a stir. Just use a popsicle stick or a stir stick or something to stir up the paint. They probably will come fairly um, mixed, but it's just a good practice to do whenever you're beginning something new. So I gathered a bunch of different things that I wanted to go on my mantle. Um, these little pumpkins had served their use. They were ones that my kids would use because um, they lit up. They'd put them in their trick-or-treat bags. But now that my kids are older, I thought that, um, that these would be great to use as a decoration. Look how well the vintage decor paint covers in one coat. Now this probably will need two coats, but I just wanted to show you that because it's really fantastic. Now I can recoat in two hours. I'm going to be making little topiaries, or not really topiaries, but little, um, little kind of potted displays with these little pumpkins. So they kind of look like gourds. I haven't been to the farmer's market to get gourds yet this year. So I'm going to be using those, but look how nice that covers with just one coat. Now I want to also show you, um, these little peat pots. I used those in a project before. I'm going to also be using these for, um, for the pumpkins. I'm going to fill them with like some moss or some shredded paper and then put the pumpkins on top. So I want to paint these to go with my display. So I think what I'll end up doing is, um, using this sagey green color. Let me see the exact color there. You could see it. It's kind of like a willowy sage color. It's called eucalyptus. <laughs> eucalyptus. All right. So I'm going to paint each of these pots this color. All right. But you don't need to see me do that. Now for this, I think I'm going to paint this, um, this kind of more bluer shade here. Isn't that pretty? Now this I picked up at a flea market and I love it because, um, and the, you know, it's not that I really mind the color of that at all, but this is going to match my display so much better. But the thing I love about this is that I could throw like a photograph on there or a, um, uh, program that my kids were in or something like that. Um, or uh, what I do a lot is I will listen to podcasts when I'm like cleaning or working around the house and I can put my smartphone right on that lip or my Kindle and I can listen to an audiobook or I can listen to, um, to a podcast and it just kind of keeps it safe and up where I can hear it really well. But again, look, I'm going over like, a glossy enamel paint and look how well that covers. It's just amazing stuff. And I'll of course finish up, uh, painting that. Now, another thing that I want to paint. So we've used plastic, we've used enamel, we've painted over enamel, we've painted on cardboard. This right here is this really fun um, monogram and I just wanted to kind of cross pollinate the color. I want it to stay orange but I want to give it a little bit of hint of that, that eucalyptus green. So what I'm going to do is actually use a fan brush and the reason I'm going to use this is because I'm not going to get too much paint. So what I'm going to do is just get the tips of my brush and the paint. I'm going to tap it off. I'm just tapping it off on the lid of my um, of my paint container and I'm just going to gently kind of distress this. Okay. Not going to do a lot. You can always add more and you know, I can always sand it back if I decide I don't like it. So it's really no risk. There's nothing quite as easy as using paint to revamp your stuff. It's inexpensive. It's quick and you'll make everything look like it goes together. Okay, look, I'm not doing a, a ton, but now this is going to match all the other things I'm going to use on my mantle. So I'm going to finish up painting these different objects that I've selected, and then we're going to go upstairs and we're going to put it all together. The 3D barn stars are a lot of fun to make, and they can be held to your wall with a little bit of poster putty. All you need to do is cut a simple star from cardstock. I used a bunch of different colors that would coordinate with the paint that I've been using. Then you simply want to score the star from indent to tip all the way around. Once you have it scored, it will look like this. Then you want to valley fold all of the indents. 
all of the little lines from the indent to the center. And then you're going to mountain fold. Whoops, let's get that last little guy there. Then you're going to mountain fold all of the points so they come out towards you. This is how you get the 3D look. All right. Now you can add a little bit of coordinating paint to it if you want to. So since this is kind of a blue, I would go with my more bluer color and just use a paintbrush to add a little bit. You don't want to put too much on, so what I do is I load up the brush and then I'm just tapping it off in the lid. And then I would just kind of give it a little bit of a uh, dragging of color here. You might want to do this on a scrap paper or something so you don't get your scoring board all dirty. Now another thing you can do to add a little more dimension is to use some of the vintage decor antique wax and a makeup sponge. I just fold it kind of in half like that and I pick up some on my sponge and then I pounce it on a scrap of paper so I don't have too much on the sponge and then I like to just go around the edges and the tips with that. If you do it while the paint's still wet, it'll blend. If you wait, you'll get a darker shadow. It's completely up to you. But either way, it'll give you a beautiful, um, rustic, primitive look. This very Americana, and um, it's gonna go great with all the other colors that we chose today. Now, there are 22 colors in the Vintage Decor line of paints, so you sure find something that you like. But the thing that I found I really like is that they all seem to really work together. So that's how you make your 3D Barn Star. Make a bunch of them. They look great in a group. The first step is to wipe down your surface that you want to paint. You really don't have any prep work, but you do need to wipe down the surface. Then if you're doing a large piece of furniture, I recommend using the uh, brushes from Martha Stewart Crafts. They're designed for pushing around this thick paint. I didn't bother masking off the mirror because it's so easy to um, clean up any mist paint on the glass using a razor blade but you can mask it if you were a little concerned with that. This is gonna take two coats. I'm going over a previously enameled painted surface, but as you can see, it does coat really well with one. If you're doing a larger piece, you might wanna pour your paint into another object, into another container, so that it's easier to dip your brush into. I'm not worried about that glass at all. I'm just gonna scrape it off when I'm done. The frame looked a little too pink when I put it on the mantle, so what I'm doing here is taking some of the Vintage Decor Antique Wax and a little makeup sponge and adding some distressing to the frame. Once the paint's dry, you can start decorating. I used inexpensive poster putty to hang up my paper stars. Just put a little bit behind the top point and press it to your wall. To add fullness, warmth, and softness to my display, I added some burlap fabric behind the mirror and off to the edge of the mantle, and then I added on some burlap ribbon too. I placed out the different pots around in a couple different placements on the mantle to figure out what I liked best. And once I decided I wanted those three in front, I filled them with marbles to weight them down. Since this is a working fireplace, I want to make sure that those lightweight pots are not going to get knocked off and catch on fire. We have a wood burning insert in our fireplace. It's very efficient and I just love it. It's one of the best things we did for our house. Now what I'm doing is taking some craft paper that I fringed cut with my fringe scissors and I'm crumpling it up and sticking it in the tops of the pots. Now I'm adding in our cute little painted pumpkins. It's hard to believe they were bright orange and glittery a few hours ago. I think they look adorable in front of that mirror. Don't be afraid to adjust and move things around as you set up your mantlescape. Sometimes it takes a few tries to get the ribbon and fabric just right, but when you have it, it's gonna look so nice. And remember, you can always change it out. Move things around, add things, take things away. When in doubt, leave it out is my motto. And um, just have fun with it. Here is the mantle all done. I think it looks fantastic, and I am so glad that I spent time doing this today. Okay, here is the finished mantle. I really like the way it came out. I was a little unsure when I first painted that bright red paint on the mirror here, but I just love it with the antiquing that I did. Now, when you do add the antiquing wax, it's very important that you wax your furniture first. 
and then you apply your antiquing wax and then you do another protective layer of wax but all the instructions are right on the containers of the vintage decor paint and wax if you'd like to find out more information about Martha Stewart crafts vintage decor chalk paint and waxes please visit michaels.com slash Martha Stewart or visit a Michael store near you I want to thank you so much for watching today and for taking this journey with me and I hope it inspires you to maybe make some fun paper stars or paint up some of your old decor pieces so that you can have a totally cohesive awesome mantle. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting!